Whether it's for his brilliant military strategies or creating one of the largest empires of all time, Genghis Khan is liked by quite a lot of people. But there was one Baltic German man who took it even further. He wanted to be Genghis Khan. The Roman von Ungern Sternberg, the Mad Khan. Nikolai Robert Maximilian Freiherr von Ungern Sternberg, or as he is more commonly known as Roman von Ungern Sternberg, was born in 1886 in Graz, Austria, to a very powerful Baltic German family. He grew up in Estonia, and in school he terrorised the other kids to such a degree that even other bullies were scared of him, and several parents banned their children from playing with him. He went to a naval academy, but never bothered to actually study, and broke just about every rule the school had. Because of this he was eventually kicked out, and after a brief break to take part in the Russo japanese War, he joined a military academy in St. Petersburg. Here he did much better, and to the surprise of everyone who knew him, he actually tried to study a bit. Now by all accounts he was a mediocre student, but for Ungern this was a massive success. It was around this time that Ungern also became very interested in Eastern culture, and was constantly talking about Tibetan and Hindu philosophy. He even went as far as to convert to Buddhism, but at the same time never stopped being a Christian. This goes against the Ten Commandments, but Ungern had a reputation for being violent, so I doubt anyone was too keen to correct him. He was described by his cousin Hermann von Keiseling, as one of the most metaphysically and occultly gifted men I have ever met. Kaiserling also believed that Ungern could read the minds of people around him, and that he could see into the future to some extent. When the revolution of 1905 happened, a large group of Estonian peasants rose up and murdered several aristocrats, and also burned down a lot of estates, one of them being the house in which Ungern grew up in. This event deeply traumatised Ungern, and convinced him that peasants are absolute monsters, and are completely incapable of ruling themselves. He described them as rough, untutored, wild, and constantly angry, hating everybody and everything, without ever understanding why. Basically just your average Twitter user. (laughs) After graduating, Ungern was stationed in eastern Siberia where he learned even more about Asian culture, and became fascinated with the nomadic lifestyle of the people that lived there, like the Mongols and the Buryats. Ungern was well liked and respected by the local people, thanks to being a great horseman as well as being fast with a gun and with a sword. He was also known for being a heavy drinker, which would constantly get him into bar fights. This culminated with him getting hit in the head by a sword by a fellow officer during one of these fights. Ungern survived this, but he was left with a massive scar on his face. It's also possible that Ungern sustained some sort of brain damage here, which would explain a lot of the stuff he would later go on to do. Anyway, in 1913 he was transferred to the reserves and travelled to Mongolia, where he wanted to try and help the Mongols gain independence from China. But he was stopped by the Russian army. Now you've probably realised it's almost 1914, and that means it's time for World War I. Although he was born in Austria and was a Protestant, Ungern would remain completely loyal to Russia. He gained a reputation as being an incredibly brave commander, and showed absolutely no fear of death. So much so that he would often do cavalry charges on German machine gun outposts. Now by all accounts this should have been the end of him. But the sight of Ungern charging at them like an absolute madman usually scared the German soldiers enough for them to retreat. For his actions he was given basically every medal the Russian army had to offer. But all of this didn't stop him from getting kicked out of the army in 1916. Apparently he attacked another officer in one of his drunken rages. Just classic ungrown stuff. He was court-martialed and sentenced to two months in prison. After he was released from prison he was sent to fight against the Ottomans in the Caucasus where he met and befriended a certain Grigory Semyonov, a half Buryat general, who would go on to be one of Ungern's only friends. And then, in March of 1917, the unthinkable happened. The Tsar stepped down. For Ungern, this was an absolute disaster. Ungern believed that kings were appointed by God to rule, and by overthrowing the king, the revolutionaries were going against God. When the Russian Civil War started, Ungern and Semyonov would immediately side with the anti-communist whites. But they would soon start to run into problems with Admiral Kolchak, 
the leader of the White Army in Siberia. You see, even though he's anti-communist, Kolchak wasn't a monarchist. For Ungern, this was absolutely unacceptable. Because of this he was forced to work alone, and he created his own cavalry division. It was made up of Russians, Buryats, Tatars, Mongols, Poles, and basically any other group that lived in Siberia. Because he wanted to work independently from the rest of the White Army, he and his men couldn't count on the White Army for food and supplies. So they basically lived off train robberies. But eventually he saw that the war wasn't going to end too well for the Whites in Siberia. So he decided to go back to Mongolia to try and secure its independence from China. On the 8th of October 1920, he crossed the border into Mongolia and sent his demands to the Chinese, all of which were denied. He was also sent a letter by the Bald Khan, the spiritual leader of Mongolia, showing his support for Ungern. On the 2nd of February, Ungern launched his attack on Urga. Now according to primary sources, Ungern was outnumbered almost 5 to 1, with the Chinese having 7,000 men, far more machine guns and artillery, as well as having a strong defensive position. But Ungern had the spirit of Genghis Khan on his side. Before the battle started, he borrowed a tactic from Genghis and lit a huge amount of campfires all around Urga to make it seem like there was a gigantic army camped right outside. This massively damaged the Chinese morale, and the battle was a massive success for Ungern, who managed to gain complete control over Urga and freed the Bald Khan from house arrest. In the end, the Chinese lost over 1,500 men. Ungern lost 60. By this point, people were seriously beginning to consider the possibility that this man might actually be Genghis Khan reincarnated. On the 21st of February, the Bogd Khan was restored to the throne, and the next day, Mongolia was declared an independent monarchy. Before his actions, Ungern and most of his higher officers were given a bunch of prestigious titles and positions including the title of Khan, and Ungern immediately got to work trying to fix Urga. He cleaned the streets, promoted education, and even tried his hand at fixing the economy. At this point, things were looking pretty good for Ungern, but like so many ambitious rulers before him, he made the mistake of invading Russia. Or rather, Russia invaded him. In late 1921, after crushing most of the war army in Siberia, the Red Army invaded Mongolia. Ungern had hoped that he would be able to push into Siberia and get support from the locals. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get the support he was looking for, and his army abandoned him. He was captured and after a six hour long show trial, he was executed. <laughs> However, his legacy would live on, and Mongolia remains an independent country to this day. So the moral of the story is, you can be anyone you want. If a random Baltic German can become Genghis Khan 2.0, then so can you. See you next time.